So hi guys, how are you? So very good evening all of you. We are on day two and we are looking at ratio analysis today as per our uh, agenda. Today we are supposed to look at ratio analysis, isn't it? So a simple topic, I'm very sure even in your seventh class, eighth class also, you might have calculated some ratios. So if it is a normal, uh, you know, physical bachelor, I used to start it like what are the ratios, you know, or um, how much of percentage you got in your 10th class or 11th class or 12th class or in your BCom, the student says 82% I got, then how, how you have calculated that 82%. So it is like how many marks I got divided by total how many marks into 100. And then some students will uh, tell when I ask what ratios, you know, they'll say, sir, we know gross profit ratio, we know net profit ratio, we know debt equity ratio, we know current ratio. So like that students will tell some of the ratios they know. Then I'll write it on the board. I'll ask them, tell the formula also. So they'll tell, uh, sir, gross profit ratio is equal to gross profit by sales into 100. Then I will ask, what is the meaning of this? Then, you know, they will try to brainstorm something. And then for every 100 rupees of sales we achieve, what is our gross profit? Like that, we come to some uh, reasonable uh, understanding and conclusions about the ratio. So this is the normal way of learning ratios. Okay. But since you are at CA intermediate level, neither I think or maybe nor it is required to give you the meaning of ratio, what is ratio analysis, all these things you know, right? What we need to see is this is our beautiful ICI study material and this is the material I have given to you. Okay, so I have shared my material with you. This is our material and this is ICI material. Okay. Both are even whenever I write material, I write any book, even when I published books for uh, publication houses also, I strictly go in lines with ICI. You cannot fight with ICI. You cannot do something, you know, contrast to against ICI. So whatever is here, whatever is there, if you see, there will be one-to-one -one matching. So they have given ratio analysis. So basically they said types of ratios, liquidity ratios are there, short-term solvency ratios, liquidity or short-term solvency, leverage ratios, long-term solvency, then activity ratios. So here, um, turnover ratios and profitability ratios, they could have given in another bullet point. Profitability ratios, they could have given in another bullet point. So then they have given the introduction. What is ratio? What is ratio analysis? Definitions and all they have given then this profitability must be fourth part. Okay, they have given this. So I have given little bigger picture like this. So there are liquidity ratios, profitability ratios, activity ratios, solvency ratios. What are all the ratios that come under liquidity ratios? This is also very important. Sometimes, sometimes in ICI exam, they will give you a problem. Under the problem, they will ask you, you are required to calculate A. A, current ratio, B, quick ratio, C, absolute quick ratio, D, like that they'll ask. Sometimes what they ask, you know, sometimes what they ask, calculate liquidity ratios, bold. Unless you know that liquidity ratio means this one, two, three, four. Normally, you don't need to calculate this two, okay, absolute liquid ratio and that um, current cash debt coverage ratio, then um, uh, cash ratio, these things will never come onto the picture. You read the whole ICI material, this two will never come. Only in theory, they will come. Liquidity ratio basically means current ratio, quick ratio. That's all. Liquidity ratio means current ratio, quick ratio. Like that, sometimes they'll ask you. This is level two. Level one, LKG problem. They'll give the balance sheet PNL and they'll ask you ABC calculate these ratios. LKG problem. Then next level problem, high school level problem. They will ask you calculate liquidity ratio. And actually, the correct ratio analysis problem should be interpret the results. Globally, when you look at uh, ACC or any other global course, for calculation, they'll give you 25% marks. That's all. Can you believe you calculated five ratios? It is a four marks problem. Four marks problem. You have calculated five ratios. Can you believe for all the five ratios put together, they will give you one mark. Only one mark. 
why you know remaining three marks or four marks or whatever it is that is given for analysis because you understand the problem you you understand the concept only when you can theoretically analyze it for example current ratio of the company is 1.2 current ratio of company is 1.2 they asked you to interpret the results then you have to mention in the answer that the current ratio of the company is 1.2 times current ratio is one of important ratios in understanding and assessing the liquidity of the enterprise the industry norm usually is 2 is to 1 which means for every 1 rupee of current liability you should have 2 rupees of current assets a current ratio of 2 is to 1 signifies the short term liquidity position and strength of the company since the enterprise x limited is having less than 2 we can conclude that the liquidity position of the company is in danger it is advisable to maintain more current assets something like this we can give so for that interpretation and analysis you are writing now for the interpretation and analysis for that there will be higher weightage globally but welcome to ICA majority of our problems majority of our problem you are very safe majority of our problems are calculate ratio prepare p and l balance sheet they give you some basic data so here the focus in ca intermediate the focus is always about calculations calculations calculation so from the given data how will you calculate this from this how will you calculate that so it is like sudoku puzzle it is like puzzle you know you have one uh, that uh, um, words will be given some letters will be given you need to construct the words so first i'll try with this if this is working out i'll try with this if this is not working out i'll try with this so there is no fixed format there is no fixed format so simply you are linking the information you are linking the information and you are trying to prepare the balance sheet industry industry in reality when you are financial analyst or when you are in the management of company step one preparation of financial statements accounting step two financial management which is financial analysis without preparing p and l balance sheet you cannot do financial analysis in financial analysis you have vertical analysis you have horizontal analysis you have trend analysis you have ratio analysis okay vertical horizontal trend analysis is not there in our syllabus only ratio analysis is there which is a small part of financial analysis but if you are say for example you are a stock market analyst you are looking at reliance industries um you know valuation you cannot do only ratio analysis you have to do horizontal analysis vertical analysis trend analysis then ratio analysis you understand but our syllabus is simple our syllabus is quite simple so in reality step one balance sheet p and l will draft step two we calculate ratios but in question it will be reverse it will be reverse giving p and l balance sheet and asking ratio is elementary question giving p and l balance sheet and asking ratio is elementary question lkg question they will ask you in reverse means what you know they will give you ratios they will ask you to prepare balance sheet p and l they'll give you ratios they'll ask you to prepare balance sheet p and l so reverse you need to do whatever it is what is the process if i am a student what is the process one read the formula try to understand the meaning try to apply that in a given situation practice as many problems as you can okay now if you look at financial management paper previously previously it was costing and fm okay in fm they used to ask eight marks question 10 marks question 16 marks question i have seen 16 marks question also in fm even at ca final level and intermediate level both but now if you look at the trend they are asking more questions less weightage small and conceptual questions 
So expect ratio analysis for four to five marks, mandatory. Mandatory, four to five marks. So when you cannot ask 16 marks question, when you can ask only four marks question, obviously the level of difficulty will fall. The level of difficulty will drastically fall. So now the questions have become so easier. The questions have become so easier. And in subject like FM and costing, the questions are predictable also. What kind of questions they ask? Predictable because I am teaching for the last 15 years. I have seen enough number of question papers in my life. You can easily say these are the models normally I see, I ask. Okay, so shall we start with step one, reading the formula? Will not spend much time. Normally, you know, I'll ask the students to read the ratio and come to the class with ratios. After that, I'll start straight with problems. But for the sake of formality, because I do not want to give you, you know, heart attack. So you cannot say, sir, you did not even tell us what is this ratio straight. You are going to problem. You are inhuman. You are not a human being. So to eliminate, to avoid these kind of things, just for the sake of formality, we'll read the ratio and then we'll move further. Read the ratio, we'll move further. Are we ready? Sandeep, turn on your mic and say hi. Hi, sir. Hi, Sandeep. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are so, you? On top of the world. So, so Sandeep, you are from Kerala, right? Yes, sir. Okay. In Tamil Nadu, so he's very famous. One person is there. His name is Rangarajan. Okay. He started one organization long back. It is called Alma Matter. After that, it is um, rebranded into Infinitism. So you have any idea? Have you heard Infinitism? His name is Mahatreya. Original name is Rangarajan, mm -hmm. but after becoming this kind of uh, um, PD trainer kind of person, you can call them uh, leaders or personality development trainers, motivators. So big hair will be there. Big daddy will be there. Nice day. So 15, 15 years back, huh? hmm, probably 15 years back, I have uh, attended his uh, one personality development seminar. Very costly. Okay. But value for money. He told whenever someone asks you, how are you? Tell on the top of the world. Okay. Even if your day is dashed up also. Okay. Your day is completely screwed up. But if someone asks you on top of the world, that means every day, every day, everyone's life has some issue or the other. But if you say, I am happy, I am on top of the world, psychologically, you are getting ready to handle the day. Yes. If you keep on saying, no, day is bad, that this, this, that and all, you will not have the positive vibe. Okay. So always, how is the day? Super, on top of the world. That means there are challenges, we'll handle that, no problem. Yeah. They are not unmanageable, no? They are manageable. We'll see. Okay, sir. Especially, I practiced this long time back in stock markets. So, not now. Now, I'm a matured investor. I invest money and I can wait. When I started trading or investing money in stock market, every second will open the app and say, Every second, like mental mad idiot. Everybody does that. Whether your okay. investment size is 2,000 or 2 lakhs or 2 crores, everybody, every second. So they keep on. If it is going little down, now, they get panic attacks. I practiced, you know, maintaining my cool that calmness when the stock markets are, you know, screwed up and going down. Okay. Make you very strong. So market is falling. Yeah, even I see, I, I observe, it is not that I do not log in. Every day I log in. One account I do not log in, that is portfolio run by PMS, portfolio management services. One uh, manager will be there for that. One small account will be there, which I will play the game. Okay. Yeah. I open the account. But today, today, if it is two lakhs loss, two lakhs loss, okay. I will not get any panic attack. 
two lakhs lost today. I won't get any panic attack. Okay. Okay. Oh, sir, you changed after that. Uh, okay. That of speed, sir. I kind of changed when I have attended his classes. Some modules were actually eye-opening. It also depends on your reception. Okay. So in Telugu, they say "dunna potu meda vana," means one buffalo is there on that rain. So it it will not change. Also, if if the rain water is falling on that buffalo, also its skin is so thick. it will it will sleep like that only it will not go to take shelter yeah skin thickness when skin is thick nothing will go inside for example if i am motivating 100 students are there in the class if you respond properly to me if you are a responsive guy then your eyes will turn into red and you will get goosebumps and you feel like you know i have to achieve something motivation turns like that after half an hour again you are a buffalo that's a different story yeah some people will be there if if people like me say you are born to be chartered accountants read you can do it if someone can get a rank you also get a rank motivation and all so some people's blood will boil to a point there are other category of people in the class serious you my dad is telling me 20 years i did not listen to my dad you are telling me 10 minutes if i listen to you i am insulting my dad no yes so it depends on how you implement the, the technique see a um, few days back i have done this amo you remember amo one of the motivational sessions a is uh, you know ability Uh, m is motivation o is uh, you know your uh, opportunity some people the moment they listen it they implement it okay some people they listen it implement later no they will not implement it. they listen it after that close this video arabic kuttu okay khatam baat they do not implement when you cannot be responsive when you cannot implement things won't happen even in his session also 30 students are there not that all the 30 transformed their life okay but i have implemented many of the theories what he told and i got the benefit hello we paid 45000 dude for nine classes 45000 15 years back how costly it is so i am a person if i spend 1 rupee i extract value for money Yeah. Extracted for forty-five thousand, whatever I have paid, I have extracted forty-five lakhs rupees of worth. But there might be people who are not benefited out of it. Chumma, they have attended that nine days training session. After that, same buffalo. So it depends. So he told me, whatever the day is, it is a happy day. Whatever the situation is, feel like you are happy and you are on top of the world. And the remaining things you handle. So no problem. ஒன் then you need to write otherwise you don't need to write current ratio no need to write anything two quick ratio quick ratio or acid test ratio or liquid ratio quick assets divided by quick liabilities okay so now put the heading ratio analysis under that write down notes under that point number 1 under that point number 1 quick ratio can also be calculated as quick ratio can also be calculated as quick assets by current liabilities so one what is quick assets quick assets is equal to current assets minus stock what is quick liabilities is equal to current liabilities minus bank overdraft 
So there are two formulae to calculate quick ratio. One formula is quick assets by quick liabilities. One formula is quick assets by current liabilities. You can use any formula. You can use any formula. Quick assets by current liabilities, ICI uses more. So this is your note one. And remember one thing, when um, I started working with one um, European company as a consultant, I have taken their ratio analysis, one guy calculated, I was shocked. I never saw this in my whole life. I was shocked. In UK, they calculate, in UK, they calculate net profit ratio like this. Normally, what is net profit ratio for us? Net profit divided by sales into 100, correct? Net profit means profit after tax. So what is net profit ratio? Net profit by sales into 100 or packed by sales into 100. In UK, they calculate EBIT by sales into 100. Net profit. First day, I argued with the finance head of the company. I said, I said, boss, this is, this is operating profit ratio. This is operating profit ratio. He asked me, what is operating profit ratio? We don't know. He's a qualified guy. They do not have operating profit ratio. Net profit ratio is only operating profit ratio for them. And I asked them, so what is PAT by sales into 100 then in your language? He said, there is nothing called PAT by sales into 100. This is one shock. Second shock. Second shock, theory shock. This is practical shock. I have seen this in real uh, life. In theory, when I was explaining um, uh, ratio analysis for CPA students, I have opened CPA book. Can you believe in US, debt equity ratio. In India, what is debt equity ratio? In India, debt equity ratio is debt by equity. Debt means long-term debt. In US, in US, debt includes current liabilities. That includes current liabilities. So for them, that means total outside liability. You include current liabilities, you include uh, short-term loans, everything. Completely different. I got mental. I got mental. How they are calculating it? Then I realized, then I realized from country to country, calculation of ratios are different. Calculation of ratios is different. Similarly, in one country also, in one country also, one company how they calculate a ratio, another company how they calculate the same ratio could be different. But normally, in one industry, they follow same practice. For example, how SBI calculates one ratio, how Punjab National Bank calculates one ratio should be same. But how SBI calculates one ratio and how Infosys calculates the same ratio could be different. Since ratio analysis is not having any statutory requirements, since ratio analysis is not supported by any accounting standard, since there is no official pronouncement which says this ratio should be calculated like this. No one told so there are huge variations between how ratios are calculated in one company and in another company. Sometimes, sometimes operating profit ratio or return on investment ratio, say for example, return on investment. Sometimes in denominator, they take losing capital acquired. Sometimes they take average capital acquired. Sometimes they take closing, sometimes they take average. So, Ponsar, which one should I take? Sometimes net profit ratio is calculated PAT divided by sales into 100. Okay.
have you seen net profit margin ratio if they ask they calculate ebit into 1 minus tax by sales into 100 return on assets in some problem they take based on ebit in some problem they take based on pattern so basically in ratio analysis you should have a strong heart and you should know in what situation you need to take which number in these kind of problems this should be done in these kind of problems this should be done this comes by practice and exercise this comes by practice and exercise you understand so you understand this um, quick ratio i have given one note this cash ratio basic defense interval these are not required only for theory you can read them later networking capital ratio simple current assets minus current liabilities networking capital means current assets minus current liabilities that's it now category b if the ratio is not relevant let us not spend more time on it so sandeep can you read equity ratio yes sir hmm. equity ratio shareholders equity divided by total capital employed okay next Debt ratio, debt divided by capital employed. Okay, next. Debt to equity ratio, debt divided by shareholders equity. Now, wait. Look at your balance sheet. This is your balance sheet, correct? Huh? Just give me one second. Let us create a new one. New white code is coming soon, not required. Okay, this is your balance sheet. Okay. In balance sheet here, equity is there. Here, debt is there. If you add both, it is called capital employed. Correct? Everybody knows this. Then here, then here, current liabilities are there. Okay, this side, fixed assets are there. This side, current assets are there. This is total assets. This is total liability. Now, trust me, literally, I'm not exaggerating. Trust me, ratio can be calculated for any two numbers. For example, fixed assets to current assets ratio, fixed assets to current liability ratio, fixed assets to total assets ratio, current assets to total assets ratio, current assets to total liability ratio, fixed assets to total liability ratio, equity to debt ratio, equity to capital employed ratio, debt to capital employed ratio any ratio is possible every ratio will explain you something or other now when you are calculating debt equity ratios like equity by capital employed debt by capital employed okay you are doing it like this debt equity means debt by equity equity ratio means equity by capital employed debt ratio means debt by capital employed that's all You understand now you should have common sense that includes debentures long-term loans equity includes equity share capital preference share capital reserves and surplus including pnl so from the balance sheet you need to pick these numbers calculate ratio that's all no nuclear science in that easy okay read the next one more debt to total assets ratio is debt by total assets no nuclear science in that also. Okay. Now, let us go to the coverage ratios. Coverage ratio. Now, numerator is, this numerator is there, no? EBAT. Numerator is, write down, coverage ratio. Coverage ratio. In your notes, write down, coverage ratio. Source by cost. Coverage ratio is source by cost. For example, interest coverage ratio. Interest coverage ratio. Who will calculate interest coverage ratio? Banker. When they are giving loan to you, bank manager will, will calculate in, uh, interest coverage ratio. What is calculating, you know, for example, if I give loan to Pavan, if I give loan to Pavan, how much Pavan has to pay? 
denominator. How much? Pavan has to pay denominator. How much of income Pavan has numerator? So the bigger the number is, happier bank manager is. So bank manager is thinking, Pavan has to pay 1 lakh EMI every month. But Pavan has income of 6 lakhs per month. Huh? Thank God I am safe. Are you getting my point? So how much you need to pay denominator? From where you can pay it is numerator. So when you calculate interest coverage ratio, how much you need to pay? How much you need to pay interest to rupees amount you need to pay? From what you can pay interest EBIT? Remember the performa EBIT minus interest. So this company has to pay two lakhs interest, and the company is having fourteen lakhs EBIT. So interest coverage ratio is seven times. What is the meaning of this? Pavan has to pay 2 lakhs of interest, but his income is seven times more than how much he has to pay. Bank manager feels safe. If it is three, still okay. If it is two, little concern. If it is one, if it is less than one, Bank manager will ask, when your income itself is not 2 lakhs, how will you pay interest to 2 lakhs? Sorry, I will not give loan. This is called coverage ratio. So when you are calculating interest coverage ratio, it is like this. Preferent shareholder will calculate preference dividend coverage ratio. How much company has to pay preference dividend rupees? From where they can pay PAT? preference dividend coverage ratio is packed by PD. Equity dividend coverage ratio. How much the company has to pay equity dividend? From where they can pay PAT minus PD. So from PAT, first you pay preference shareholder. Balance only to equity shareholder. This is equity dividend coverage ratio. Debt service coverage ratio. The difference between interest coverage ratio and debt service coverage ratio is in interest coverage ratio, banker is calculating only for interest component. In debt service coverage ratio, banker will ask, if you pay interest, I'm not happy. You need to pay principal amount repayment also, no? So, so in debt service coverage ratio, interest plus principal repayment. Basically, these two put together is nothing but EMI. These two put together is nothing but EMI. What is the source? Operating profits plus depreciation because depreciation is non cash moving, no, that cash also will be there in the business. So, this is what we call this is what we call operating profit plus depreciation or cash operating profit. Cash operating profit from that you can pay EMI. These are the ratios, that's all. Now, you read the formula EBIT by interest plus installment debt service coverage ratio in the numerator. Add depreciation also here. EBIT plus depreciation you can add. And in some companies, they will calculate EBIT by EMI. Both the ways it is correct. But in ICI material, if you see, it will be EBIT plus depreciation. Add back depreciation in the numerator. So you can write a note. Debt service coverage ratio, EBIT plus depreciation divided by EMI. Interest plus principal installment. Then remaining things, you know, interest coverage ratio, EBIT by interest, preference student coverage ratio, PAT by PD. Capital gearing ratio. Numerator, capital with fixed cost. Denominator, capital without fixed cost. What is capital with fixed cost? If you issue preference shares, fixed dividends you need to pay. If you issue debentures, fixed interest you need to pay. If you borrow long-term loans, fixed interest you need to pay. So numerator, all, all capital components have interest or dividend, fixed cost. Denominator, shareholder fund, no cost. But of course, opportunity cost will be there. Real cost, cash outflow will not be there unless you pay dividend. And that is up to you. You decide whenever you want to pay dividend, up to you. So this is capital gearing ratio. Then fixed assets to total fund ratio, fixed asset by total funds. Proprietor ratio, proprietor fund by total assets. This put a star mark. This put a star mark. 
very important in problems we'll see this in multiple uh, ways okay then capital turnover ratio remember in turnover ratio turnover will be numerator please don't uh, be confused okay normally look at this ratio fixed assets to long term funds a to b ratio is a by b observe here a to b ratio is a by b but in turnover ratios a to b ratio will be b by a in all turnover ratios look at capital turnover ratio it is not capital by turnover it is reverse turnover by capital fixed asset turnover ratio sales by fixed assets reverse total asset turnover ratio sales by total assets reverse working capital turnover ratio sales by working capital then all these raw material turnover ratio all these ratios you will calculate in working capital management debt or turnover ratio credit or turnover ratio inventory holding period ratio all these ratios will calculate in working capital i'm sure you might have seen these things somewhere but still read all these ratios once read all these ratios once then we'll go to next part i'll give you one minute of time after reading that in the chat box tell me that you are done So after completing, please type done. raw material turnover ratio raw material consumed by average raw material stock okay now one note for all these things in denominator can you see average here average here average here average here here average inventory in numerator average debtors in numerator average creditors in all these ratios from 6 to 11 write down a note write down a note from all these 6 to 11 one note if if average cannot be calculated for example you are thinking about uh, debtors credit period for example ratio 6 to 11 okay ratio 6 to 11 uses averages for example in debt or turnover ratio we use average debt or however if both opening and closing debt or are not given in the question then use the ratio by taking closing debt or this applies to all the ratios for example pawan sir i cannot calculate average inventory pawan sir i cannot calculate average inventory opening inventory is not given i have only closing inventory then what to do take closing inventory only we assume that opening inventory closing inventory is same so see closing stock is equal to 100 rupees opening not given 
I can't calculate average. So take closing stock as average stock. Some students will argue, how come closing stock will be equal to average stock power, sir? Simple. Since opening stock is not given, I assume opening stock is equal to closing stock. Then if you calculate average, opening 100 plus closing 100 divided by 2, 200 by 2, 100. So closing stock is average stock. So this is what we do in many problems. Simple. What is the conclusion? If average stock cannot be calculated, take closing stock. No problem. Guys, all of you understand this. Can we move further? Can we move further? Okay. No. These are the easiest ratios. Okay. Easiest profitability, easiest ratios. What is return on equity? Pat by net worth into 100. Into 100 should be there. Pat by net worth into 100. EPS, earnings available to equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. DPS, total dividend divided by number of equity shares. P ratio, price divided by earnings or MPS by EPS. Dividend payout ratio, DPS by EPS. Here into 100 should be there. In fifth ratio, into 100 should be there. In first ratio, into 100 should be there. Profitability based on assets or investment. Return on capital employed. EBIT by capital employed into 100. Return on assets. Packed by total assets. Here also into 100 should be there. Here also into 100. Return on capital employed post tax. Put a star mark. Very, very, very important. Return on capital employed is equal to, guys, can you tell me what is this? Have you seen this anywhere? EBIT into one minus tax. Is there any technical term for that? Is there any technical term for that EBIT into one minus tax? Anyone who can tell technical term EBIT into one minus tax? That is called a NOPAT, N-O-P-A-T, net operating profit after tax. No, no, that is not EBT, darling. That is not EBT. EBIT into one minus tax is not EBT. EBIT minus interest, then it will be EBT. You're not subtracting interest, you're applying post tax. If tax rate is 30%, one minus 30% will be 70%. You're applying 70% on EBIT. This is called net operating profit after tax. If you want to write down net operating profit after tax. X is equal to no bad is equal to EBIT into one minus tax. EBIT into one minus tax. It's called no pat. We use this in capital structure theories. In capital structure theories, when you are doing Modi Glani Miller approach, net operating income approach, valuation of business, EBIT into one minus tax rate divided by E. There, anyway, I'll explain this. No problem. Don't worry. Sir, what is the meaning of dividend payout ratio? Ray, ray, ray. That is LKG basic. Dividend payout ratio means if your EPS is, say, for example, rupees 10, what portion of EPS is distributed as dividend? For example, if if dividend of rupees 6 is announced by company, then dividend payout ratio is 60%, which means out of earnings, 60% are distributed as dividend, and remaining 40% are retained, which goes to reserves, retained earnings, we call it. Retained earnings. We got it. Sandeep, you understood this now? 
Yes, sir. Understood. Yes. Super. Everybody understand? Hello, dividend payout ratio. Everybody understand? So, packed by total assets into 100. This is the one. Okay. Next. These are LKG ratios. Okay. Gross profit ratio. Gross profit by sales into 100. Net profit ratio is net profit by sales into 100. PV ratio is contribution by sales into 100. Operating profit ratio is operating profit by sales into 100. This four, if I explain you, I'm insulting you. Isn't it? This four, if I explain, I'm insulting you. So guys, all of you, please confirm by done that you understand this four. We'll go to next. Super, very good. Profitability ratios based on capital market information. Dividend yield ratio. Sandeep, tell me what is the meaning of this? Sir, for a given uh, price, how much dividend we uh, shareholder can earn? You received, for example, you received rupees 40 dividend share from Reliance Industries Limited. Okay. Reliance okay. Industries Limited nominal value, face value, face value of share is say rupees 10. Okay. What is the percentage of dividend paid? Um, four. Four percent. Uh, four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred percent. Reliance Industries announced, we announced four hundred percent dividend. Shareholder is very happy. But yes, sir. later you realized you bought share with 2,300 rupees, not 10 rupees. Yeah. Correct. Eh? Yes, sir. Reliance is saying they paid 400%, but I did not get 400% return. No. no. How much return I got? Uh, um... 1.73 something. So I got 40 divided by 2300 into 100. Yeah. That is called dividend yield ratio. Okay. Dividend yield ratio is dividend by market price into 100. Earning yield ratio is EPS by market price into 100. Market value to book value ratio is market value of share divided by book value of share. How will you calculate book value of share? Intrinsic value you calculate in accounts now. In amalgamation and all intrinsic value. How will you calculate net worth by number of shares? That is called book value per share. Then there are some expense ratios, cost of goods sold ratio, which is cost of goods sold by sales into 100. This is nothing but 100 minus gross profit ratio. If your gross profit ratio is 10%, cost of goods sold is 90%. No? Hello? Are you following me? Simple. Operating expenses ratio. Total operating expenses by sales into 100. What is operating expenses? Admin expenses, selling and distribution expenses. So operating expense ratio is admin expenses plus selling and distribution expenses divided by sales into 100. Operating ratio. Cost of goods sold plus operating expenses by sales into 100. Add 1 and 2, you will get 3. One is cost of goods sold. Second one is operating expenses. Third one is put both together. So if first one is 70%, second one is 10%, logically third one should be how much? First one 70, second one 10. Third one should be how much? Correct, 80%. That's all, financial expense ratio is equal to financial expenses by sales into 100. What is financial expenses? Interest. Financial expenses means interest. That's all. So after that, I have given some notes. Ta -dan, ta -dan, ta -dan, ta -dan, ta -dan, this one is to torture you. Leave it one. If you want to do homework, you can do, but leave it. No problem. I only created a big balance sheet, big p and I have given and asked the 25 ratios. Okay, we'll start with problem two. 
Sandeep, read this question, mark. The total sales or credit of a firm are uh, rupees 6 lakh 40 thousand. Hmm. It has a gross profit margin of 15 percent and a current ratio of 2.5. Okay. The firm's current liabilities are rupees 96 thousand, inventories rupees 48 thousand, and cash rupees 16 thousand. Okay. Determine the average inventory to be carried by the firm. If an inventory turnover of five times is expected, assume a 360-day year. Determine the average collection period if the opening balance of debtors is intended to be of rupees 80,000. Assume 360-day in a year. If yeah. they give assume 360-day, you can take 360. If they have not mentioned anything, still you can take 360, but you need to write a note, assumption. It is uh, okay. considered that year consists of 360 days. Like that you have to write. Otherwise you take 365, no problem. Okay, now I want to test you how prepared you are in ratio analysis. So I'm giving you problem number two, problem number three, problem number four, classwork. So I'll give you 10 minutes of time. In that you need to do problem two, three, four. Okay, let me see how many of uh, you will be able to do that. Don't worry, if you are unable to do that, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> 